home with me and it's just as much fun for the earth and the oaks when we leave when I leave. So that's the message. Pack in what you pack out. Have fun. Hey, we need to ignite the sacred light in you and me so that we can be free. We need to ignite the sacred light in you and me so that we can Hi there folks, this is Megan Hunt coming at you live from Harmony Park. I'm here today to give you guys a status update on the porta potties. How are the porta potties looking in there? Not bad yet actually. Have you been to many festivals? Um, this one only. Oh, this, is this your first time here at Harmony Park then? No. No. <laughs> no, okay. First time in a porta potty. No. Oh, okay. So <laughs> it's definitely not the worst you've seen. Absolutely not. Oh, okay. Action and welcome to Trash Talk TV's segment Earth to Project Earth. I'm here in our trash ocean with Bird. Is it Bird? Yes. When you throw something away, where does it go? Where does it go? Um, in my city it actually goes right next to the river in a big pile. You know I read the other day a little trash fact that said that 80% um, of the pollution that we produce on land ends up in our oceans eventually. Did you know that every day portable bathrooms actually save 125 million gallons of water? I just read that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Live here with Trash Shock TV, Earth to Project Earth. I'm talking here with Rich, a supporter of the Minneapolis chapter of Sea Shepherd. How are you doing today, Rich? I'm doing very well, Sharky. How are you? I'm fabulous. I feel very blessed that you're here swimming in my trash ocean with me. And I'd love to ask you a few trashy questions if you don't mind. Maybe. Go ahead, sure. All right. My first question for you, Rich, is what is your favorite kind of trash? Uh, my favorite kind of trash is the stuff that isn't trash or the stuff that got repurposed like you're so good at. Um, trash is a major problem for the planet, but definitely for the oceans. Plastic uh, is a very major problem uh, for our oceans, so I guess uh, I would rather there not be any trash would be a good answer. What do you do best to help with trash? Well, in my own personal everyday life, I use as many reusable containers as possible, and I purchase things that are not overly packaged, minimal packaging as much as possible, uh, composting, uh, there's a lot of ways that we as end users can eliminate or greatly reduce our uh, trash impact on the oceans and it has everything to do with the choices you make with the stuff you buy and the things that you use and single use plastics are a definite no-no but here at Project Earth and with the Minneapolis chapter for Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, I'm the chapter coordinator so it's my job to organize uh, groups of volunteers to do events such as this where we raise money and uh, awareness for the organization and its many campaigns worldwide. One thing that really concerns me is the amount of plastic that it ingests. Yeah. I learned that probably about 80% of the pollution and waste that we put into landfills eventually run, like a lot of that pollution and microplastics end up running off from the streams to the ocean. Correct. And I was wondering if you could share any more insight with our viewers yeah. about the trashiness of like what what the end game is for our ocean. Like where does that trash go right. when we throw it away? That's a good question. Now people talk to me all the time, they're like, well I recycle everything. You know, well guess what? side out of mind, you put it in the bin, you think you recycled it, you think you did your job, but actually, where does the recyclables go? Where does it go? Where does it go? Did you know that China buys a ton of recyclables from the United States? And so we have transportation and retransportation and retransportation and every phase in between all of those stages, a gust of wind blows, a plastic bag goes in the water, and next thing you know a shark will think it's a jellyfish because it looks like one blooming in the water 
and they will eat it and eat several of them and you will find dead marine wildlife with plastic bags in their guts. So the last question is, what is the trashiest trash? Humans. For sure. Without any question of a doubt, we're the problem. So that is the trashiest trash. Hello, Mom. Mama, I'm so glad you called. I've been... I feel like we haven't been really connecting lately, and I just... Oh, Mama Earth. I feel like things are rough here in our world. Like, I don't even know how. They talk about a carbon footprint, and I know you breathe in my carbon, and you give me this beautiful oxygen, and I don't even know what to do, but I think it's... I think I just have to start by calling you. I'm sorry I haven't called you in a while, and I just... I want to connect and I want to know how we can find love between us again, Mama Earth. Thank you for calling. I love you, Mom. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi there, folks. This is Megan Hunt coming at you live at Project Earth, brought to you here by Trash Talk TV. We have Sweetness here from Be The Change. She's going to give us a in quick impromptu interview. So, one question here for you, Sweetness. Well, and before I, before I go on, thank you for your time being with us thank here you. today. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so, sweetness, first question. What is your favorite type of trash? It's the not wet kind. Not wet? I, you know, I don't think we've gotten that answer yet. Okay, I guess and I'm what do you like to do with your not wet trash? I'm sorry, I forgot. So, Willow and Halo and I are setting up our narrow waste bin. So this is the third bin besides recycling and trash. This is stuff that we might want to save for craft projects. And Halo's going to show us his clues, his treasures that he found. Um, I'm going to show you some things to help your campsite be a little Nero waster. And Halo's got some good ideas. So here's some things that would go in the separate bin. It's not trash, it's not recycling, it's art. So what's some of your clues that you found? Some treasures. Tents. Tents? Oh yeah, so we're going to make some tents. Do we have our poles in here? Yep. So we get out. Six. We found four, some tent four. poles and we're going to make some tents for our little fairies. Fairy tents. Right? We also have, what else do we have in here that we found? Fairy brick. So here's our, is our hel helicopter propeller. Oh, clouds for the helicopter in the sky. Oh, it's got the flag. Oh, the flag for the top of the tent, so you can find your tent in case you get lost. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. Yeah, I don't know if maybe that helps you get your brain flowing. It doesn't. I'm okay. totally blanking out. When you throw something away, where does it go? What is away? I know. I, I know, right? I know, right? I know. Everybody's just like, it just disappears. It just goes. No, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah, I, I, maybe a lot of people do know this, but I will. I do have to mention it, because I just recently learned exactly the size of one of our trash oceans. is twice the size of Texas. And that's just one of them. That's not funny. I'm when it comes to trash, what can you work on? Not producing as much. What I think we need to be doing is making more plant-based products that so that it can rot, that right? Decompose on their own, like set rot. Aloha, it's Jen Ra, the sun here. Sometimes I'm a little too hot to handle. Wanting to just give you a little insight about how my heat can affect the plastics that we find on the ground. This was a fun little piece of a compound, and now it's. We found it on the ground, and if no one picks it up, my burn and rays and my heat would make it not decompose, but plastics do something called photodegrade, which means that they never really fully decompose back into their original matter. What kind of matter is in the plastic? It's stuff that can't go back into the circle of the ground and the appropriate chemicals and organic compounds. So when things photodegrade, even though it looks like they're breaking up and going back into the earth, really, they've not changed their molecular form, so there's tiny bits of what we call microplastic. So this is the sun, Jen Ra, asking you to be mindful and remember that the memory, the fun memory that you leave behind means an earth that could be full of microplastic that we wrote our food with. So this is Jen Ra asking you to ask yourself and all of us, what's the matter? Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yep, no, uh -huh. yeah, no, I got it. That is very interesting, very interesting. I will get on that right away, sir. Hi there, folks. This is Megan Hunt, Porter Reporter Live. 
All right, so I just got some very interesting breaking news from our uh, research team here at Trash Talk TV. Come to find out, the U.S. spent $100,000 on a survey asking the question, is it more popular to put your toilet paper roll facing forward or behind in the holder? That's right, folks. $100,000 later, and what do you think? It's the front. You definitely want to put the toilet paper in the front. That is the most popular. We have heard it live. Coming at you here with Trash Talk TV. So. with us here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> now, it, it seems like it's a pretty sunny day here on the Porto Reports. Now, you, you did tell me that you were just coming out of one. I was. How was it looking in there? Um, you know, it's been a lot worse. It wasn't too bad. There's only one roll of toilet paper left halfway through, and the, the hand sanitizer is almost gone, so. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. It looks like we're already running a little low. It kind of seems like we're definitely uh, going over our toilet paper capacity yep. today at the Porto Loop Palace. Do you want to make sure we're on the right channel? I think we need to go up. All right, we're going live. In five, four, three, two, one. How's your day going? Been here in Harmony Park. Pretty good. It's been fun. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. All right. So for the first question, what's your favorite kind of trash, Rain Queen? I think that's a good answer. Well, why do you say banana peels? Because you can easily throw them out in the woods if you have trees or something nearby your house or in compost. Oh, okay. So you like that it's biodegradable. Very nice. BYOTP, bring your own toilet paper. Bird's got a little advice when you come to festivals about what you might be bringing. Can you tell us about it? Before you come to a festival, stop at your local Dollar Tree, pick you up a pack of Sesame Street baby wipes. A dollar four with tax, 72 wipes. 72! You never felt cleaner. Never felt cleaner. He's keeping it clean and classy, folks. So let me ask you a question, Bird. When you're done with the wipes, the 72, I don't want to get into your personal matters, but 72 is a while. But when you're done, when that is empty, what do you do with the plastic, the wrap? Well, it's recyclable. 
It's recyclable. Number four. Number four. Yeah. Classic. I think you're right. They told me that the crunchier it is, the less recyclable it is. So keep the crunchy. It's the stretchy that you want to put in the plastic bag recycling screen. So another breaking news. FYI. BYOT. BYOT. Bring your own tea. Bring your own toilet paper. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. We're keeping it clean and classy here with the Porter Reports. This just in. It's BYOTP. See, she's smart. She brought her own TP. BYOTP. BYOTP. You got it, girl. My name is Andy Quirkus, and um, I always just pick up trash on the ground pretty much everywhere I go. Um, try to recycle and compost as much of it as possible and that's what I do here and for maybe five four years I've been on the Saturday trash volunteer crew um, we go and consolidate the trashes and clean things up there's not usually that much litter to pick up at this fest so I haven't filled my pail with uh, litter at this festival yet so that's a good thing. It's good that people are picking up after themselves here. I am dressed as the Lorax because I'm here to speak for the trees. Uh, this is such a beautiful, special place because of all the trees here. And I feel like it's important for us to be respectful of the trees by cleaning up after ourselves. There's no glass allowed in the park. And today there was a glass bottle in the trash that when it went into the compactor, it exploded and shards of glass went flying yards away from the compactor. Nobody got hurt. But um, when they say no glass, it's, it's important not to have glass. And also not putting trash in the fire pits. Um, some of the some of this stuff that people throw away is pretty toxic to burn and uh, it's more responsible to put that in the garbage if you don't know what else to do. I really love this festival and how much people actually do pick up after themselves at this one. So Project Earth is my favorite. I think it's funny like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be offended by paper plates from now on. You're gonna be offended by paper plates? Yeah. Like I would eat out of the pan if it's not offensive. Put the food in my hands. I could. I would rather eat off the grass than to, to you know destroy a tree to make up the whole process that it goes to have a paper plate just seems a little you know counterproductive. Kind of leave. If you think you're free, if you think you're free, then you can't escape. Then you can't escape. And if you think you're free, if you think you're free, then you can't escape. Um, I am Emily Myers, and I am from Norfolk, Tennessee, and I've been walking around and picking up cigarette butts, because Jen had told me that I could send them to a place called Terra Nova, uh, so I gathered all of this stuff, I kind of just wanted to see, and, this is, and I did like very minimal walking around, and um, because of my back and stuff, so, and this was just like a few hours of walking around. And, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of them. And like, we probably walk around for, like five minutes and find another 20 more. It's one cigarette butt, and, like, makes a huge difference. And a lot of these are picked up on the same spot. So, like, I would walk through one part of the circle and pick all the ones that I saw up, and then um, I would walk back through, and there'd be like another five. So, it, like, it really accumulates a lot faster than you would think. You know, they're just like a cigarette butt. Thank you guys so much for being with me here today. This is Megan Hunt, Porter Reporter Extraordinaire, coming at you live here with Trash Talk TV at the Porter Loop Palace, signing off, asking the question, what is the matter?
Thank you.